all, um, they contained a company called Skymax. I'm here to just give you a brief points on dimensional analysis, which is simply referred to as dimensional goal method. You see, this is physics, and this topic will definitely give concepts to the high school students who are preparing for their work. So the first point, what do we mean by dimensional goal method? Dimensional goal method is simply there to show how a quantity is related to another quantity. When one quantity is related to another quantity, shared is what we refer to as dimensional method. And this topic is mostly done for high school students, which we refer to as WASC, NECO, JAM, and other related high school examinations. So, in this case, dimensional method, since we know that it's a quantity, which shows how one quantity is related to other quantities. So, there are certain things we have to capture. We have various types of quantities. We have the vector quantity, we have the scalar quantity, we have the direct quantity, and we have the basic or the fundamental quantity. From all of those which have listed, those four is only one that is mostly used, and that one is what we call the fundamental or the basic quantity. So the fundamental or the basic quantity, we have seven types of fundamental quantities. So although we have again another supplementary units or quantities, you see, but in this case, we focus mostly on the fundamental quantities. So, if we try to capture these fundamental quantities, and you see how best we can be able to use them under this topic. Because when you understand this topic, definitely we are, we are, we are well prepared to answer your question in a while. So, dimensional quantities, let's try to capture the most fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities. And we have seven of them. So let's put them in the table from quantity and let's capture the units and as well as the dimension. So if we have this, so if we have these values, so the first quantity, let's say length, and we have mass, we have time. We have current, we have amounts of substance, we have luminous intensity, we have luminous intensity and we have thermodynamic temperature. So these are the basic quantities which we have to, to capture. And if we capture the unit again, the unit of length is m and the unit of mass is kilograms, the unit of time is, is per second, current is ampere, amount of substance is mole, luminous intensity is candela. And we have thermodynamic temperature to be Kelvin or degree Celsius. You see. But most, the most points we need here is how we can have the dimension of each of these four quantities. So in this case, the dimension of length, we normally use the first letter of each of these. Because like the most widely used, used dimension and values will be the length is commonly used, the mass is commonly used, and the last one is the time. These are most commonly used as fundamental quantities. So to capture their dimension, they try to capture the first letter of the word. So the first letter of length is L, so the dimension of length is going to be L. The first letter of mass is L, so the dimension of mass is L. The first letter of time is T, so the dimension of time is T. So doing that, length is L, mass is M, time is T. But in another version, current now, we simply use A, and amount of substance, we just use MOL. Luminous intensity, which is candela, we just use CD because here is just the basic symbol. And thermodynamic temperature, we use K. So these are, they are basic fundamental quantities. 
So in this case, how we can use use the dimension to find the unit of basic quantities? Here now we have to capture again the uses of quantities. One of the uses of quantities is we use quantities to find the unit of quantity. That's the first one. And the second point again, we use use dimension to show how a quantity is related to another quantity. The second point again, we also use dimension to show we also use dimension to show the correctness of an equation or to show the validity. Either an equation is correct or not, or either an equation is valid or not. But our study point here is how we can use dimension to, to, to find the unit of quantities. So finding the units of quantities. Finding the units of quantities. So how we can find the unit of quantity? So let's start to capture the first one, length. We we'll take length. Let's take the first, the two dimensional quantity, which is area. Area is the formula of area of any figure can be length times the breadth for either a rectangle or a square. So the dimension of length is length of length is L. So we represent it as L times the dimension of, dimension of breadth. This brought us again to a point which we must have to capture. Because length has many words we can supplement to that. Length, we can use radius to represent length. We can use range to represent length. We can use diameter to still represent length. We can use distance to represent length. We can use height to represent length, we can use displacement to represent length. So when you come across displacement, height, distance, diameter, range, radius, each of these words, since they are measuring the, the, the separation between two points, all of them will refer them to be length. So instead of writing the dimension of distance to be D, but we use what L. Instead of writing the dimension of height to be H, we use L. Instead of writing the dimension for distance to be D, we use L. Instead of writing the, 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 the dimension of diameter to be D, we use L. Range, we use L. And radius, we use L. Another word to give, we have the width of breadth. Same thing again, we use L. So wherever you see any of these words, so their dimension will be length, and which is L. So we have to take note of that. So the dimension of length is L. And the, the dimension of breadth is also L. So if we multiply L times L give us of L squared. So this is the dimension of length. So this is the dimension of area. So what is the unit of area now? The unit of area, since we have the unit of length to be L, so this L will be M and the square is represented. So this is how we use dimension to find the unit of specific quantities. So if we move further, We'll take again the three-dimensional word again, which is the volume. Volume is length times breadth times height. So the dimension of length is L, as we discussed, breadth is also L, and height is also L. So this gives us what? L cubed. So what is the unit of length is meters, and we represent cube as this. So the, the unit of volume is meters cubed. This is how this dimension helps us to find the unit of quantities. We we'll take the let's say density is also another quantity. Density, we have the formula to be mass represented by all over volume. But what is the dimension of mass? Mass is M, we write it. And volume, we have it already as L cube. So if we carefully put this up, since its power here is positive, when we put it up, it's going to be negative 3. So this is the dimension of density, m l raised to the power minus 3. So what is the unit of density now? The unit of mass is kilograms for this m. The unit of length is meters, and we represent the minus 3. So we'll take again speed. Speed now is measured in distance divided by time, 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 time taken. So the dimension of distance is L, the dimension of time is T. So if we put it up, it's going to be LT minus 1. So now, the unit of length is meters, the unit of time is second, and we have minus 1. 
Therefore, the unit of speed is meters per second. But in this case, there are certain quantities which have the same unit and as well as dimension. Which quantity we think have the same unit of speed? Speed again have the same unit as velocity. So velocity of speed has the same unit, although they have their, their differences. So speed of velocity have the same unit to be lt minus 1 and the unit is going to be meters per second. So we consider again another quantity which we refer to as simply 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 the acceleration. And acceleration we measure it to be velocity divided by time. So what is the dimension of velocity which we have here already as lt minus 1? What is the dimension of time we have it to be t? If this t is move up, we have lt minus 1, t minus 1. So therefore, for capture it, L, since there is indices, when we have two base, we take one, since they are the same, then we add their powers. So minus 1, minus 1, give us minus 2. So this is the dimension of, of, of simple acceleration. So what is the unit of it now? So the unit now, since the unit of length is meters, and the unit of time is seconds, so we have minus 2. So the, the unit of, of simple acceleration, we have to be meters per second squared. So we have to be another quantity which we refer to as force. Force is measured by mass multiplied by the multiplied by by, by simple acceleration. So in this case, the dimension of mass is m times again the acceleration we have it to be here. But don't forget because gravity can as well be 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 the acceleration. So this one so, so in this acceleration can as well be the same as the gravity because gravity and acceleration, the both of them they have the same unit and the same dimension. So the unit of mass is m and the unit of um, the dimension of mass is m and the dimension of simply the acceleration is lt minus 2. So if we multiply the two values, we have m lt minus 2. So what is the unit of mass? We have it to be kilograms. Values of length, we have it to be meters. And time is S minus 2. So the unit of force is kilograms, meters per second square. But mind you, we have units in different forms. We have the conventional units and the dimensional units. We all know that the dimension of force, the unit of force is written, which is the conventional units. And as well as the dimensional units now, can as well be kilograms, meters per second square. So you can well use this to measure force instead of emitting. So we consider again another different quantities. So after force, let's say we consider moment. Moment again, we have it to be force times distance. You see? But moment can as well be measured in, 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 in different forms. Because moment, work done, and energy, both of them they have the same dimension. So the dimension of force which we have as m l t minus two, we represent it m l t minus two. And the dimension of distance, we all this length which is l. So if we multiply this, we have m l square t minus two. So what is the unit of mass is kilograms, what the unit of length is meters square, what the unit of time is s raised to the power minus two. So the unit of moment now which is the dimension I need is kilograms, meters squared, and seconds squared. So this again, mind is the same as work done. Work done, I see. Moment, work done, and energy, both of them, they have the same unit. But let's consider energy, which type of energy? Let's say we consider kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is measured in two quantities, in terms of the mass and the speed squared. So, what's the dimension of mass is m and the velocity we have it to be lt minus 1 squared. So, if this is simplified, we have half m, when you square l is l squared, when you square t is going to be minus 2. So, therefore, what is the unit of mass is kilograms, what the unit of length is meter squared, and time is b. So, you see, Work done, movement and energy both have the same dimension and unit. ML square T minus 2, again ML square T minus 2. The unit again kilogram meter square S minus 2. Kilogram meter square S minus 2. 
Whichever quantity you can also use potential energy. Potential energy is also mgh. The dimension of mass is m. The dimension of gravity, I told you, is the same as simply the uh, simply the expression, which you have as L T minus two times m height is L. So this gives us m L times L is L squared and T raised to the power minus two. So what the unit of mass is kilograms, length is meter square and time is this. So potential energy being what type of energy is it? They both have the same dimension. You see, because the dimension is this, the dimension for, for kinetic energy is this, potential is this, work done is this, moment is this. So work done, work done, moment and energy, they both have the same dimension. Now let's look at again another quantity which we refer to as power. So what is the dimension of power? But power, we can express power to be energy or work done all over time, 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 time table. So the dimension of energy now, we can take anyone as work done, which is ml squared t minus 2 and time taken is t. You see, but mind you, like what I said, we are not going to consider this because r is just a dimensionless value. So that's really you don't see me, I write it here. So r is a dimensionless value, so it's not much important. So if we move this t, because time each power is 1, because a number without a power, we assume each power to be 1. So if this one is moved up, we are going to have m m squared t minus 2, and when this move, it's going to be minus 1. So if we add it now, m l squared t minus 2 minus 1 is going to give us minus 3. So the unit of power now, mass is kilograms, length is meter square and time is s is minus 3. So this is the dimension of power. We also have stress. Let's consider stress. Stress again, we have it to be force all over area. So the dimension of force, we have it here to be m l t minus 2. And the dimension of area, we have it to be l squared. So here, one of these L will cancel one. So what means of is mt minus 2 all over L. But if this L is moved up, we have ml minus 1 t minus 2. So therefore, the units of stress is kilograms as m, length is meters, and time is second. So this is the unit, this is the unit of stress in terms of dimension, and this is the dimension of stress. But stress again can as well have the same dimension to pressure because pressure can as well measure force over area. So stress is equivalent to pressure. So both pressure and stress, they both have the same, same, same dimension. So we we'll move again to other quantities like let's consider again. Let's consider surface, surface with tension. If surface tension is also considered. We have surface tension to be force, it's measured force all over length. But the dimension of force, which we have as m, l, t minus 2, and that of length is l. So we can see this l, we carefully can see this l. So what we mean is be m, t minus 2. So therefore, the dimension of surface tension is m, t minus 2, and each unit is kilograms per second squared. You see? So this is so another point to be, let's say we try to calculate the we try to find the dimension of heat. We try to find the dimension of heat its its capacity. We also have heat energy, heat energy, which is Q to be in terms of the mass times the specific capacity times change in temperature. You see. But since we all know the dimension of its energy will be the same as moment, work load or kinetic energy, all of this, you can capture any one of these. Let's say we take this one, ml squared t minus 2. So the dimension of its energy is ml squared t minus 2. The dimension of mass is m. We are looking for the dimension for specific heat capacity c. We we'll write it. And change in temperature, this dimension will just be Kelvin. We have we just left it as Kelvin. So here I can see mass cancel mass. 
So what we mean is L squared T minus 2 equals to C times K. So if I want to find the dimension of C now, divide both sides by K, which is L T minus 2 equals to C times K, divide both sides by K, both sides by K. So this K will carefully cancel. So C now will be L squared T minus 2 all over K. So if we put it up, it's going to be L squared T minus 2 and K inverse. So therefore, specific its capacity, C has dimension L squared T minus 2 K inverse. So these are just the basic quantities. So I think try to subscribe to my YouTube and I'll be giving you my my um, my, my tutorials weekly. Thank you all and stay blessed.